In the mid-90s, horror was in a strange place. The slasher film had died out, and horror in general was perceived as box office poison. Kevin Williamson, then struggling screenwriter, was inspired to write a scary movie after seeing news reports about the Gainesville Ripper. He wrote the script fairly quickly, and a bidding war ensued. Miramax ultimately won the script, hoping to find success for their genre imprint, Dimension Films. Williamson and the producers all wanted Wes Craven to direct the movie, but he turned it down. This is something Movies with Mikey covered very well in his video about Scream. There's an interesting contradiction in horror regarding the depiction of women. And yes, I agree that the horror genre is home to a lot of incredible female characters, certainly much more so than action films. We're going to talk about some in this video. But horror films, especially slashers, focus heavily on violence against women. And if anyone wants to get mad at me, I'm not calling anyone out. I'm not saying that people that made some of these films are bad people, or that you're a bad person for enjoying these films. But I do think reflection on these choices is important, and it informs Scream. Guys obviously die in horror movies too, but it's usually a lot quicker than the female deaths, and then sexuality comes into it. Women are either punished for their open sexuality, or punished with sexual violence. I know there are exceptions. I fucking love Jenny in Friday the 13th Part 2. She's sexually active and drinking at the bar with everyone, and she still kicks Jason's ass and survives. But these things are tropes for a reason, and those tropes suggest, even just subconsciously, a lot of uncomfortable and potentially dangerous ideas, which played into why Craven didn't want to make the movie. And then Drew Barrymore signed on to Star, which drew a lot of interest in the industry for the movie. That, combined with a comment from a young fan that his films needed to kick ass again, convinced Craven to take the job. Scream is the story of a town thrown into chaos after the murder of two high school students, Casey Becker and her boyfriend Steve. The focal point is another student, Sydney Prescott. Her social circle includes her boyfriend Billy, her best friend Tatum, Billy's best friend and Tatum's boyfriend Stu, and fifth wheel Randy. Sydney very quickly becomes the central target of the killer who wears a ghost costume and claims to be responsible for the murder of her mother one year earlier, even though the suspected killer of Maureen Prescott, Cotton Wary, is already on death row. Also along for the writer Deputy Dewey, Tatum's brother, and news reporter Gail Weathers, who begin to fall in love throughout the story. Everything culminates at a party at Stu's house. Tatum is killed as well as Gail's cameraman, Kenny. Randy, Gale, and Dewey are all taken out of commission, leaving Sydney alone with the killer, or killers, Billy and Stu, who killed not only everyone in the film, but Sydney's mother before framing Cotton. Maureen was having an affair with Cotton and Billy's father, the latter being the reason Billy's parents split up. With Gale's help, Sydney is able to fight and kill both Billy and Stu. The film's opening prologue is a masterclass in horror and suspense. Shortly before shooting was set to begin, Barrymore decided that she no longer wanted to play Sydney as originally intended. She wanted to play Casey, the girl that dies in the opening scene, feeling that it would be really cool. Everyone expected her to be the star, and she dies almost instantly. It gives the film that cool cycle element, as well as tying it a bit to the original Nightmare on Elm Street, which did a similar thing with Tina and Nancy. It's a terrific scene. Barrymore does a lot that makes people fall in love with Casey and want to be her best friend. She's just so charming and warm. And the way that the scene builds, the tension just ratchets up and up and up. And there is something so cruel about it, these kids dying seemingly over movie trivia. It's one of the best sequences in a horror film, if not the best. Another element that really makes it work is Roger Jackson's voice as Ghostface. Billy and Stu disguise their voices with a voice box. And it is an intense voice. It can be scary, but it isn't over the top like Freddy Krueger. Jackson doesn't ham it up like Brad Dorff's Chucky. The voice is actually kind of charming at first. It's why Casey and Sydney don't just instantly hang up. Casey flirts with them, and Sid flat out states that she thinks the voice is sexy. That's kind of clever. I like that thing you're doing with your voice, Randy. It's sexy. And of course, Ghostface looks amazing. It's such a simple costume, but the mask is so evocative. I love that it is clearly something that the kids could just buy in a store, but it still looks intimidating. There are a lot of elements that make Scream excel, but for me, the most important one is Sydney Prescott, played by Nev Campbell. She is my favorite fictional character. She's my Luke Skywalker, or my Superman. 
Obviously, she's a badass. In your dreams. Not in my movie. But there's a lot of depth to her as well. This is a character dealing with the death of her mother. That would be interesting enough. But Williamson adds an additional element with Maureen's secret life. When Sid should be grieving, she's forced to face her mother's mistakes and confront things about her mom while having to deal with the direct consequences of her mother's actions. One of the movie's best scenes is the one in which Sydney hides in the bathroom stall while two girls gossip about her. Obviously, the scene is fucking hilarious. Those two girls are so funny. But the scene has layers, like an onion. Cake! Everybody loves cakes. Cakes have layers. I don't care! In the scene, the girls call Maureen a tramp and Sid is forced to face reality. The scene kind of implies that deep down, Sydney knows, and she's just repressing it, or in denial. It's a really sad scene, while still being really funny. The balancing act of tones Williamson pulls off in his script and Craven in his direction is astounding. The movie should not come together the way that it does, and yet it feels effortless. In terms of the supporting cast, Billy and Stu are great killers. There was a debate among the producers over whether the two should have a motive or not. Some feeling it would be scarier without one, and others feeling it was important for them to have one. So, Williamson did both. Stu doesn't seem to have much of a motive outside of a worship for Billy, and Billy's motive obviously comes from his abandonment issues, which gives him an interesting parallel to Sydney, which he tries to point out to her, but she rightly rejects that concept because it isn't the same thing. The two also make a good duo, with Matthew Lillard being more over the top and chewing all of the scenery, while Skeet Ulrich plays it more menacingly. And Billy is an evil son of a bitch. Fuck you! No, 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 no. We already played that game, remember? You lost. I know he's murdering people, but that sentence is the most evil thing he does. Think about it. An essential part of Billy's plan is to emotionally manipulate Sidney into having sex with him. That is so fucked! In terms of the mystery, I've heard a lot of people say that Billy is too obvious. And sure, maybe, but that's not the twist. The twist is that there are two killers. And I call so much bullshit if anyone claims that they guessed that correctly. Additionally, I like that Billy and Stu are consistent throughout the film, even when they are revealed as killers. A problem the Scream sequels get into is that the killers change personalities completely when they are revealed as killers. Billy and Stu are much more interesting and complex. Tatum, played by Rose McGowan, is great. She's really funny, and I like that there's some duality to her. In the scenes at school, she comes across like most of the cast. Cynical, and too clever for their own good. But when we see her in her bedroom, it's very girly and innocent. She's got a stuffed animal and cute pajamas. She's nicer to Dewey. That feels very real. I also like the way the movie handles her death. She isn't being punished. We don't know anything about Tatum's sex life because it has no relevance. She doesn't talk about also being a virgin in her conversations with Sydney, but that doesn't mean anything, and more importantly, it doesn't matter. Tatum dies because she's a hindrance to Billy's plan. She's practically Sid's bodyguard. If she's around, Billy can't manipulate Sydney into having sex with him, so she has to die. I like that her death is actually plot-motivated. I wasn't sure if I wanted to address this, but if the movie is about anything, it's about how repressing the negativity in life doesn't solve anything. It is hard to watch McGowan in this movie. I have not named the film's producers, but one of them went on to sexually assault McGowan. He is currently rotting in prison, thankfully, but that doesn't change what he did. McGowan has said that Scream was the last time she truly enjoyed being on a set. It is hard for me to reconcile that something I love, like this movie, is tied to someone so evil. I watched a documentary on the film, and in it, every time the other producer, who is the brother of the one that assaulted McGowan, among many other women, and undoubtedly covered it up, is mentioned, the reference photo used is one of him and McGowan. It's uncomfortable to say the least. Randy is of course endearing and an easy character to relate to due to his love of horror movies and that he is desperately slash pathetically in love with Sydney. And Jamie Kennedy gives him a fun energy. Dewey's great. He's interesting because he's the light. Everyone in this world is so cynical and jaded except for him. 
and David Arquette's performance is so endearing. I don't love Gail, but I think that has a lot to do with what's done with her in the sequels. But she is a fun character to hate, and Courtney Cox is great. I've talked about the script a little bit here and there, but it cannot be overstated how good it is. Obviously, the dialogue is fantastic. It's unique, memorable, and easily quotable. But the movie is also really well structured and paced. It moves without ever feeling rushed, and it knows how to build the tension brilliantly. There's also really solid setup and payoff. What works is that it's subtle. Billy only mentions his parents' divorce once, and the line about Casey dumping Stu for Steve, you realize later that's why they killed her without the movie needing to spell it out for you. The main theme of the movie is about violence in media and how it affects us. Being both a KISS fan and a horror fan, that is something I had to deal with frequently. Does violence in media affect us? To a degree, yes. There have been studies that show that watching violence on screen, especially at a young age, certainly can desensitize someone to violence. But that doesn't mean it will directly cause violent behavior. And in those studies, the people were not watching a Friday the 13th film, they were watching a Rocky movie. Violence in horror movies is, more often than not, horrifying. I've talked about this before. Craven never glorifies violence the way it often is in action films. When Superman 9-11's a city in Man of Steel, it's framed as cool and badass and heroic. When Casey dies in Scream, it is none of those things. It's tragic and scary. It's both hard to watch and impossible to look away from. Like New Nightmare, Scream is about shining a light on the silliness of that. Billy and Stu are young piece of shit white dudes who can't handle their own crap and take it out on the women in their lives. A tale that is a little too common in the real world. Movies really had nothing to do with it. But the film does play it a little more ambiguously because Billy and Stu based their entire motif on slasher films. The cinematography and music are both great as well, helping to give the film its unique tone and atmosphere. Scream was released on December 20th, 1996. With a budget of $15 million, the film grossed $173 million worldwide. The biggest of Craven's career, and for a time, the biggest for a horror movie. Reviews were also largely positive. Scream was massive. I remember going trick-or-treating as a kid and just seeing streets full of Ghostface. It was everywhere. Scream is my favorite movie. Ever. I think it's brilliant. I do not have a memory of seeing it for the first time because I was so young, but I've always had a big connection to it. It's endlessly entertaining, charming, funny, intense, scary. The characters and performances are great, especially Sydney. It's a movie where everything works, and I love it so much. It's an incredible film. Thank you.